friend or ask IMDb? No, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. no chances here. 50-50. Mm. Uh, so say our names. Uh, hi, this is uh, Megan Hilty from uh, Sean Saves the World. I'm Tom Lennon from Sean Saves the World. Spell S-E-A. I don't know, spell it, do I? That would be insane. No. Okay. <laughs> wow. Insane's a relative term. <laughs> Neither one of you. I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> what was the question? Neither one of you. That's it. That's why that I hope I are, are strangers to the series television. Uh, so uh, does it feel like, is doing another series just like getting back up on the, on the bike again? Or, or I mean, this is a half hour for you, and, and you're used to one hour. And yeah. You've done so many half hours that... Uh, oh, I can run any show into the ground, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, what I will say, no, for me, I actually felt a tremendous amount of uh, pressure because I, I especially uh, playing sort of iconic character on Leo 911 for a long time, I mean, it was a Halloween costume of it and things like that. Uh, I actually felt a ton of pressure that the next uh, thing I did in a sort of big television way couldn't be... It had, one, it had to be a really amazing character. One, two, it had to be a pretty weird character. It can't be uh, uh, anything that's sort of normal because people don't want to see me do that, and why would they? Um, and it also just had to really sort of pop. So um, when I read the script, uh, when I first got the script, I thought, well, it's unlikely I would like a, a mainstream, uh, you know, 9 p.m. Thursday uh, sitcom. That just doesn't seem like my, uh, my milieu. But uh, I really loved the script. I thought it was really funny. And, and I, I also just loved the idea of playing a character like Max who's so icky. It just gets, I get to be icky all the time. I get to have a bird. I mean, I can't wait for all the <laughs> icky things I get to do. I get icky reaction shots. I get to have bad posture. It's really exciting for me. And how would you be as a boss? Me? Myself? Yeah. yeah. I would really probably be, well, you know, I, I, as much as I'm good at glaring at people and uh, I, I'm, I'm good at a withering glare, I'm actually a really, really uh, nice, soft person. And I, I can't, I, I have a hard time really uh, yelling at people. So I probably wouldn't be good. I'd give people time off and all the things that you're not supposed to do. And then well, you don't cut him any slack, do you? <laughs> no, I really, you know, I, we have a great rapport. Me, Sean and I, as soon as I read the script, I was like, oh, because Sean's, you know, he's literally bubbling over with positivity all the time. And I'm the perfect stopper of that. I mean, I'm the perfect <laughs> counter. I can just plant my feet and glare at him and it's just, it's a good, it's, we're a good mix, I think, of sort of a fire and ice. Now you didn't, you weren't in the pilot, so mm -hmm. they all got to kind of bond and gel during the little pilot process. Not really, no. So, so, uh, so. I was going to ask, see, I was going to ask what they did to welcome you in, but since they all hated each oh, other from the get. Machine. It was pretty funny. <laughs> uh, it was pretty customary we did the for, classic, for a series, uh, though. It was pretty intense hazing. <laughs> then we left you out in the woods for a couple days. Yeah. Yeah. I found my way out. She did. Yeah. Well, that's why you're here. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> I made it. <laughs> well, well, give us a thumbnail of the character, because, you know. Uh, I'm, the short version, she's kind of a hot mess. She's Sean's best friend. They work together, and um, she becomes this strange motherly figure to his 14-year-old daughter. But she gives horrible advice, so she's not, like, the, the ideal person you want your kids around. A train wreck. Right? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Well, but with good intentions, yeah. And what do you like about your character so far? Well, I haven't shot anything yet, so... Um, That's so, why she's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> she's totally theoretical, which is why we love her. Um, but I, um, I just love the fact that I get to, to play this great character. All of these characters are so well written, the script's amazing. Uh, the cast is incredible, so I'm just really looking forward to to playing with everybody. Tony, you've got two yeah. movies in release now mm. and a TV series coming mm. up. Um, mm. What kind of deal with the devil do you have to sign? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I do. I, you know, I guess I read Michael Caine's book a long time ago about how much he likes to work. Someone had asked him once what they. Uh, and I'm like, well, either Jaws 3 or Jaws 4. <laughs> and they weren't, cra they, they weren't crazy about the film. And he said, you should see the house it bought me in England. <laughs> and I thought, hey, you know what? Michael Caine is really smart. Um, I do, I just, I love to work. I love to write. I write compulsively. Um, we've written some films I'm super proud of. Some films that were absolute flops. Um, uh, television work that, uh, you know, generally the more control you have over it, the 
the better the quality. So um, I was pleased to see this script in a, in a show that I do not write at all, which is really very fun for me. Um, that I get to kind of just walk in and, and have a character that other people have thought about. Um, it takes a tremendous amount of pressure off. But it's not something I do that much, so it is something I'm sort of getting used to. Uh, but but I, do, I do work compulsively, would be the answer. I don't take a lot of time off, really, ever. Maybe We've a little off topic, but any, have you had a chance to do any kind of a post-mortem on, uh, on Smash? Oh, gosh. Um, I mean, not really. Uh, I don't really look at it that way, though. I, I mean, in this business, shows on film or off are, um, or I mean, on stage, they, they open and they close. You know, it's just something that we all have to deal with, and um, I just enjoy it while I have it, and just keep moving. <laughs> Sean, we've all been, and I say this really, truly, we've been blessed. Wait, Sean's in the room? No, I said <laughs> It's okay, we look very similar, and we're from about two miles away from each other. Are you really? Oh, that's his friend. All right, right. We, we've too. been blessed with, with the career that you've had, uh, you know, because you played some incredibly quirky characters, mm -hmm. but I'm wondering, when you were first starting out as an actor? Mm -hmm. well, what did you envision for your career? Oh, well, I, went to, I moved to New York in 1988, uh, right after high school in Oak Park. And I went to the Tisch School, and I was in the experimental theater wing. And I had every intention of playing Hamlet on Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was just absolutely positive. I was going to be a dramatic uh, stage actor for the rest of my life. I never had any doubts about that. I was from Chicago. I was raised in the theater. But my parents took me to I saw the original production of Vita uh, in London and the original production of Equus in London. If you do the math, I was six years old. Wow. So that's kind of insane. But uh, I just knew that I was going to be a, a, a dramatic, theatrical actor for my entire life, and that never happened. <laughs> and I found out it's much, yeah. much more fun to be the goofball. Do you recall um, what a six-year-old's take on Equus is? Oh, I really yeah. do. Uh, <laughs> it, it really made me think naked ladies were pretty neat. Um, there was some gouging out of horse eyes and stuff like that. I didn't to think about that that much. I mostly remember thinking, wow, naked ladies are straight up neat. <laughs> I was going to say the blinding aspect. That, part, that didn't stick with me as much. Yeah. And, and May, you know, most of us are radio here and, and do a lot of music-centric things. You've got a new album now, though. Yeah. Could you talk just a little bit about it? What it yeah, it, it's called It Happens All the Time, and it's uh, half covers, half originals. Um, and it's, a, it's not a musical theater album. It's a big departure from what I normally do. Um, so it was a deeply personal project that I wasn't expecting, and um, and I'm really proud of it and excited for the next one. Can you give us a rinky dink of some of the standards that you, or some of the covers Cover. that you covered? Uh, yeah, um, uh, 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 part of the matter is probably my favorite um, uh, song on the album. Um, oh gosh, uh, it's funny because it started out as a cover album, and it was going to be songs from the movies and off of soundtracks that I really liked. So. Um, uh, I do a cover of Amy Mann, uh, 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 I can't remember, sorry, I wasn't playing on that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's been, yeah, no, oh gosh, no, this is Not awful, please me. don't play this, that I can't remember the name of something off of my own album. Um, Wait, your tongue is okay. Yeah, it's not, uh, yeah, oh no, <laughs> time's out. Uh, yeah. It's fun. I also have an album yeah. coming out, which is me <laughs> doing covers of Weird Al covers of other songs. Um, I know it sounds a little bit abstract, uh, but it's for a niche audience. Some people would say it's not for any audience. I would have to agree. It sounds like something my niche will love. For all your niches and your face. Megan, up.